Well, the least surprising thing has just happened to Justin Trudeau. He has been bailed out of another major ethics scandal. Throughout David Johnston's two month long service as the very official sounding, but ultimately fake title of special rapporteur, we haven't learned much as Canadians when it comes to the very real threat of Chinese election interference. But one thing we have learned is the true undying loyalty and unbreakable bond that exists between card carrying members of the Laurentian elite. The Canadian establishment, these bilingual Laurentians don't give us much these days, but they do give us lessons in loyalty. To never leave a fellow Laurentian behind, even if it's your last act on the battlefield, like it is for David Johnston. A man who once held a truly unimpeachable legacy is now the face of what many Canadians see as a blatant act of cover-up and corruption. If any of you are still holding out hope for accountability, my message to you would be to prepare for a very long wait. As you will see on this show, regardless of what team you play, Play for or what color tie you wear, accountability does not exist anywhere in the inner circles of the Canadian establishment. The party will always go on, and we, Canadians, will always play the role of butlers and servants. Drop a like in the video, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel, stick around for the ratio of the week, and the common question for the episode is this. Is this the end of the China scandal, or is there still more to come? Let me know in the comments, and let's get into it. What? Trudeau's close family friend and ski buddy bails him out of another major ethics scandal? Who could have possibly seen this coming? A further public process is required, but there should not and need not be a separate formal public inquiry. A public inquiry examining the leaked materials could not be undertaken in public, given the sensitivity of the intelligence. So no public inquiry and all important information is hid behind classified top secret briefings that can only be accessed by someone who swears to not tell the public anything of what they saw. All Canadians can do is just take the word of David Johnston. Surely an unimpeachable man whose credibility and character simply cannot be matched and his impartiality cannot be questioned, right? Many in the Liberal government are trying to make that push to try and tell Canadians that questioning David Johnston's impartiality is not fair and it's unseemly, as some are now saying. But members of the legacy media, shockingly, are doing their jobs and are pushing David Johnson on his very close friendship and close connection with Justin Trudeau. Watch as David Johnson hilariously tries to distance himself from Justin Trudeau immediately after giving Trudeau a golden get out of jail free card. Uh, my friendship with the current prime minister uh, was based only on a few skiing expeditions with my children. He was a student at McGill where I was principal, uh, and amongst about 20,000 students I would see him from time to time. In that period of time, until he became a Liberal Member of Parliament, and I was Governor General, I had no meetings with Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Justin Trudeau. I had no letters that I can recall, no telephone calls. Um, the only occasion I recall meeting him in that period of 40 years was at the funeral of his father, which my wife and I attended. So there was no interaction with respect to the current Prime Minister of a friendly kind, other than the respect I had for a graduate of McGill University. And my only real contact occurred when he became elected member of parliament and I held the office of governor general. Those are the facts of the so-called friendship and scheme. What Johnson is trying to say here is that there was a very specific period of time when Justin Trudeau and David Johnson, close family friends, fell out of contact. And that kind of weighs on Johnson's heart. Between the time of Pierre Trudeau's funeral and Justin Trudeau's election as an MP, they didn't talk at all. And clearly, David Johnson remembers those times because all the other times, they were very close friends. They shared great memories on the slopes of Mont Tremblant, the Johnsons and Trudeaus, a great family bond. But Johnson's tone describing the relationship that he had with the Trudeau family a few days ago is a lot different than the tone he used back in 2016 when giving an interview on CTV News. Back in 2016, Johnson was glowingly remembering the days of when Pierre Trudeau would talk about the intricacies of democracy with David Johnson's children. And the family uh, have become uh, good friends and our friendship with, uh, with Mr. Trudeau goes back to children's days when our five daughters and he and his two brothers uh, skied together at Mont Tremblant. Yeah, right tell us a little more, more of that because a lot of Canadians don't realize that you, in fact, were a very good friend of Pierre Elliott Trudeau and that your family uh, you knew all the Trudeau kids when they were growing up. I guess it shows what a small country Canada is. His three boys were the same age as our five daughters, so we were uh, kind of a ski party from time to time at Mont Tremblant where we have a, a place and would ski on weekends. So we got to know the, the, the children and our friendship, our relationship was really built out of uh, childhood exchanges. And our children had enormous respect for uh, Mr. Trudeau Sr. Uh, he was a lovely, a wonderful father and very good with children. Uh, he would lead them into discussions that uh, 
uh, would be uh, let's come let's talk about um, how many functioning democracies there are in the world for example this was with teenagers it was just great it's interesting because as justin trudeau the liberals and david johnson try to downplay the close family friendship between the Trudeaus and the Johnstons, more information is surfacing about just how close these two are. You see, in a 2010 CBC radio interview, Justin Trudeau told the CBC that he and David Johnson were dinner companions and shared many great conversations around the dinner table. And in that CBC interview marking Johnson's appointment as Governor General, the broadcaster in that interview said that the Trudeau and Johnson family were very close friends and that they vacationed together. But just to be extra careful, David Johnson went the extra mile. To guarantee that his appointment as Special Rapporteur was not a conflict of interest, David Johnson appointed his friend Frank Iacobucci to decide whether or not the appointment was the right fit for him. Frank Iacobucci, also a member of the Laurentian elite, what a surprise, made the shocking finding that David Johnson's appointment as Special Rapporteur was perfectly fine. What I can say with respect to the allegations of an appearance of conflict of interest, I took the trouble of seeking a legal opinion from a retired Supreme Court justice, that's Justice Frank Iacobucci. He was very clear that there's no conflict of interest with respect to the Trudeau obligation, so I have no doubt whatsoever that I had any conflict of interest, and no doubt at all, speaking myself, about my impartiality or my ability to bring my record such as it is for you to judge as to whether I'm capable of carrying out a impartial and uh, um, inquiry based on integrity. Now this Frank Iacobucci character, just like David Johnston, also happens to be a member of, wait for it, the Pierre Trudeau Foundation. Isn't that funny? But to assist David Johnson in his very long and arduous two-month investigation into Chinese election interference, he employed a woman named Sheila Block, a heavy-hitting Bay Street lawyer who also happens to have been donating thousands of dollars to Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party. Now, who could really question the impartiality of this lot? Now, when asked by a reporter if Justin Trudeau would hire someone else to look into Chinese election interference, given the clear and obvious conflict of interest between the two, well, Justin Trudeau did what he does best. Attack the Conservatives, say Pierre Polyev is hiding behind a veil of ignorance, and saying that Conservatives are attacking Johnson's integrity and not his report. And for once in his life, I think Justin Trudeau might be correct. Johnson's integrity, without a doubt, is in question, however sad that may be. First of all, they're not questioning his report. They're only questioning his integrity. Uh, I'd suggest that opposition leaders and indeed Canadians take a look at his report uh, and understand the work that he's done in this. This is an eminent Canadian who has served in many capacities over decades, was appointed Governor General by Stephen Harper, and uh, has done extraordinary work on an extremely serious issue. And Pierre Polyev is choosing to sit behind a veil of ignorance instead. He doesn't want the facts to get in the way of a good political argument or a personal attack. But if the Conservatives were just attacking the report and not Johnson's clear conflict of interest, they would still have tons of ammunition. Let's look at this report together, shall we? In the report, Johnson doesn't mention the Trudeau Foundation once, despite being a key organization at the heart of the China scandal. Despite the organization receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars of communist-backed donations before and after Justin Trudeau became the Prime Minister. And despite Johnson and Morris Rosenberg, the first person appointed by Trudeau to investigate the China scandal, being members of the Trudeau Foundation. It's so obviously a cover-up that it can't be ignored, but yet nowhere in the report does David Johnson mention the Trudeau Foundation. However, in the report, Johnson goes to great lengths to attack the legitimacy of legacy media reporting that broke this scandal wide open. Going against the interests of the establishment in Canada is a big problem in his eyes. Leaking secret intelligence is unlawful and a breach of duty by the leaker. It cannot be justified by any frustration the leaker may have with the government's response. It is a matter of urgency that all efforts be made to identify and hold the leakers responsible. Malice cannot be ruled out. I recognize that absent the leaks, I would not have been appointed to undertake my work. However, that does not justify the leaks, which risk great harm to the Canadian interest. And if you really wanted to see where David Johnson's loyalty lies, that last line is all you need to see. That the CSIS leaker operated in his eyes against the interests of the Canadian people. I would argue the complete opposite. 
I would say the brave CSIS leaker operated not in the interest of the Canadian establishment, not in the interest of Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government, but in the interest of Canadian people to tell us, the Canadian people, at great risk to himself, what is really going on, to not hide the truth like David Johnston and Justin Trudeau would prefer. The argument that you're going to see a lot from liberals on social media and from journalists over the next few days is that David Johnson can't be seen as biased toward Justin Trudeau because David Johnson was appointed by Stephen Harper. But like I said in the beginning, it doesn't matter what team you play for or what color tie you wear. The Canadian establishment always look out for one another. And Chinese election interference has been going on for a very long time without anybody being held to account. At least according to former CSIS intelligence officer, Michel Junot Katsuya, who last month told members of parliament that he has evidence that every single government from Brian Mulroney to Justin Trudeau has been compromised by the Communist Party of China. This little communist back shindig has been going on for quite a while, it seems. Both conservatives and liberals have been benefiting from it. Just watch this. So today, I want to be very clear, and I want to, pr uh, and I want to be very clear. We can prove that every federal government from Mr. Mulroney to Mr. Trudeau have been compromised by agent of the Communist China. Every government were informed at one point or another. Every government choose to ignore CISA's warning either by negligence, self-interest, or partnership, a partisanship, sorry. Every government were infiltrated by agent of influence acting on behalf of the Chinese government, and we knew who they were. Not only the sitting government had been compromised, but all federal par political parties have been compromised at one point or another. The inaction of the federal government, all federal governments, were led to attacks on many municipal and provincial government. Ultimately, every government had been part of the problem, not the solution. So David Johnson's report, he's not just covering for the Liberals, he's covering for everyone, the entire Canadian establishment. A giant look away sign, there's nothing to see here, folks. The person who holds all the leverage here is Jagmeet Singh, and just like always, he doesn't know what to do. Now for a while, he's been doing a good job of pretending to care trying to tell Justin Trudeau to hold a public inquiry into election interference. Now, the one thing he could do is break his coalition with Justin Trudeau to end his supply and confidence agreement and hold Justin Trudeau, finally, to account. But there's a problem. Jagmeet Singh's golden pension doesn't kick in for another two years. And by holding Trudeau to account, he risks jeopardizing that coveted golden pension. Watch as Singh pathetically dances around answering a question about breaking this coalition with Trudeau over this report. I, I again see the only obvious way to try to force Justin Trudeau to do something he doesn't want to do is the confidence and supply agreement. I mean, what other tool can be as effective as that? We'll be providing you with details, the, the media with details when we make those next steps, but there's other tools and we'll be using those tools. Okay, but like, I, I, I guess I'm hung up on all the tools in the toolbox, right? I've got a hammer, a socket set, a wrench, a drill, a screwdriver. You know, you have the hammer that you can swing with the confidence and supply agreement. I mean, other than a meeting with him, what is the next thing new, new Democrats are going to do to try to force the prime minister to change his path? Well, like I said, that's not a decision we're making today uh, around the confidence and the supply agreement. But there are other tools. And as soon as we are going to decide on which one we're going to use next, we'll let you know. But we want to make it very clear that we'll be letting the prime minister know I disagree with the decision. Like I've said before, it's a big party and no one wants the music to stop. If you're on the red team, the blue team, or the orange team, they've all got a part to play and they've all got a role. But you know who doesn't? All of us, Canadians. We play the butler and servant as they enjoy the entertainment. All right, Rage for the Week time. The winner this week, unsurprisingly, is Justin Trudeau. After he announced David Johnson's final report, he got absolutely destroyed on Twitter. 3,651 replies to only 2,672 likes. The Independent Special Rapporteur, the Right Honorable David Johnston, has released his first report and will take the steps needed to implement his recommendations and will continue to take action to strengthen and protect our democracy. And no one cares. Most corrupt leader in Canada's history. 769 likes at the time of this recording. Seems a few Canadians might be agreeing with that statement. Imagine that. You have just proved that you can get away with anything when you appoint a personal friend to oversee your corruption. If the government is responsible for election oversight and that same government selected slash appointed the special rapporteur, then could you please explain to your citizenry how there is legitimate independence to this investigation? The explanation we get from the government is just to trust them. Trust us, we're from the government, we're definitely not lying to you. 
Yeah, okay, sure. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for us this week on the show. Reminder to let me know in the comment section your answer to the comment question. Is this the end of the China scandal? All right, my name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio. <laughs>